welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs B and I'm an art teacher from Melbourne and I decided to put a whole lot of lesson ideas into videos for you to do some art at home. to do a really quick shout out to two of my subscribers their names are Ellie and Emily and they're absolute legends because they've just let me know that they've had a look at every single one of the lessons I've created which is an awesome effort and shows a lot of commitment so thanks to you two legends today I'm going to show you how to create some awesome pictures of Disney princesses as a mum of two young girls my house is filled with Disney and all of the princesses that come along with it. So this gave me an idea to show you step by step how to create artworks of two of the most popular ones. They are Queen Elsa of Arendelle. This is a watercolour artwork and I simplify it so that you're able to create something cool like this. And something a little bit more complicated for the more advanced artists out there is a picture of Ariel. Now this is a more complicated drawing as well as painting but feel free to have a watch and have a go. All you'll need for this beautiful painting tasks is some watercolor paints. You'll also need a pen for some finer details and some watercolor paper. You can use normal paper, but watercolor paper is a bit thicker. So it means that you'll be able to use the water a little bit better. So as promised, I'm gonna show you two strategies for creating artworks of Disney princesses. Now, to start off with, I'm gonna show you an example of Queen Elsa from Frozen. Now, my daughters love Frozen, so I thought this was a fantastic choice. We're gonna use watercolors mostly today, but to start off with, I just wanna give myself an idea of the features of Elsa. So, the first thing we probably need is an oval shape for her face. Now I'm drawing super lightly. Can you see that? Because if I draw too hard, we're gonna see the pencil mark through the watercolor. So when I'm drawing, I am pressing as softly as can possibly be. Now her hair is just gorgeous and flowing yellow. Now I don't need to draw it perfectly. I'm just giving myself an idea of where her hair is. So she sort of has a plait that comes down like this, doesn't she? Across her shoulder like that nice and long the reason that I'm not drawing details today is because we're gonna let the paint do the talking we're more so doing a suggestion of where everything is rather than giving all of the information I'll show you what I mean so I might now draw her arm and hand coming up like this. She likes to use her hand to create magic, which will kind of come out here. And so she's got a very petite, delicate little hand, which I'll just give myself a bit of information that it comes up like that. All right, when it comes to her dress, her, her gown has a beautiful cape flowing at the back, doesn't it? And that sort of comes around like dress comes down like this as well all right you might not really be able to get a full understanding yet of what I'm drawing but that's okay you'll see what I'm gonna do soon all right so I've got a fair outline an idea of where everything's gonna go now I'm going to use my watercolors to fill in some paint now I'm gonna start by doing her face and I'm gonna use quite a bit of water because I want it to blend really nicely so I'm firstly just painting the face and neck area with some water and now I'm gonna just dab in some sort of skin color there. the fact that we paint the water first means that the watercolor when popped down it, it blends and bleeds really beautifully and there we just have a bit of a suggestion that that's her face. We're not drawing any eyes or mouth or nose or anything. We're just giving everyone an idea of where her face is. There. 
I'm going to do the exact same thing with it here now and I'm going to just paint with water but this time obviously I'm going to use more of a yellow and this is sort of a loose painting or drawing today so I'm happy if these colors kind of blend and bleed together that will happen because the paint is still wet so I'm going to get some of the yellow going into where the face is but I'm going to try to keep it in my hair area as best as possible always add water again afterwards. I'm gonna use different types of yellows. See there, a bit of a darker one to add some different tone. Now, this yellow is going too much into the face area for my liking, so I can always take it away by dabbing a towel on there and then putting the color that I actually want there. So I do want it to be Fairly sort of messy, but probably not quite that messy. You can also control where the paint goes by moving it, actually physically moving the paper. Notice when I've done her hand, I haven't overthought it. I haven't drawn every single finger. I've almost done like a V shape there to show her fingers and her thumb. As I said, this is a very loose, almost impressionistic interpretation of an artwork of Elsa. So it doesn't in any way need to be perfect. Let's move on to her dress. That's a beautiful light blue color. Again, I'm going to paint with the water first. The colours will stay where you've put the water. that the skin color up here is now dry I'm able to paint a little bit closer to it so I'm gonna do the rest of her dress now and her cape paint with water I know Elsa's cape doesn't really normally have purple in it, but I needed to distinguish it and separate it from her dress. So I've just added a bit of purple in there to make it look like a different section. In with water, then add the paint. Let the colors play together like that. Notice now I'm sort of adding some little details. The paint's still wet, but I'm adding some tiny little dots so they blend and bleed out really beautifully to create a little pattern on the dress. Now I'm wanting to create some magic coming out from her hands here. So I'm actually gonna get a little bit of blue on my brush here and I'm going to flick So that the magic is coming out of her hand and I'm gonna add that flickery kind of detail to her dress and around remember this is 
very loose kind of drawing. So adding splashes and details like this sort of just add to the idea of the artwork. It's sort of meant to be a little bit messy and suggestive. See, the harder you flick, the stronger these splatters are going to be created. If you just flick really lightly like this, you'll just get some tiny little details. So depending on how messy, I guess, you want your artwork to be. I'm gonna teach you another strategy now for drawing and painting a Disney princess. However, this time, I'm not going to make it as loose and messy. It's gonna be a lot more structured and we're going to add finer details with a fine liner. So I'm going to do Ariel sort of sitting on a rock. Um, and I always need to start with sort of the face. Her body will come down here and her legs, well, not her legs. tail <laughs> will sort of come down like that. Her arms will sort of reach over like that. So that's the basic structure. Anything that you draw can be broken down into simple shapes. So I've done an oval, another oval, another oval and another one here. So that's all we're doing to start off with. Now we need to add in some finer details to actually turn it into something that makes sense. So here are her, her arms are coming to hold here. It's not going to be a perfect drawing because um, I just want to teach you the basics, but her tummy kind of comes in like this. She's fairly, fairly skinny. And I believe her tail will sort of start there. So that's her, her bottom and her legs coming up. And then her tail will sort of come down with her coming out like that. Now her beautiful red flowing hair comes around like this. Now we're looking at a profile so we need to draw in a little nose. The rocks, you just need to draw a few sort of wobbly lines. And we need sort of a horizon line, which is the water there. I might put sort of a sunlight in the background coming around. This is my basic drawing of Ariel, adding some details after I've done some basic shapes. I'm now going to lock it all in with um, a waterproof pen. Notice this one is a waterproof, quite a fine point pen that will work the best. I'm gonna add in all the details that I want to keep and not draw any details that I would like to erase. notice I'm actually drawing in quite a sketchy kind of way that's just sort of my personal style I like to do that because there's a little bit more room for error if you make a mistake you can sort of just scratch around it so hopefully that helps you to have a little bit more confidence to have a go at something like this it doesn't need to be perfect I'm just honestly going from memory and um, filling in the things that I can't quite remember and I hope that I've been able to break down sort of the simple shapes so that you feel a little bit more confident to just have a go. And you know what? The first one might not work, but the second one might.
Now speaking about this sort of sketchiness, look closely at the hand. Like that is not a, a, what a hand really looks like, but because I've done sort of a scratchy, sketchy kind of drawing, it doesn't really matter if some lines aren't quite correct. You can sort of fix them up. And again, you're sort of just suggesting where everything is. It's not a perfect drawing as if you worked for, you know, Walt Disney. It's your own sort of interpretation of it. And rocks, honestly, look how easy they are. Wobble, 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 wobble sort of line. There you go, she's sitting on some rocks. A really important part of learning to draw is learning to sketch. Notice that all my pencil marks were easily able to be rubbed out making my artwork much neater now that I could get rid of those pencil lines. And it's because I sketched really, really lightly. So I'm able to get rid of those lines I don't need anymore. I'm gonna paint this in a similar sort of way that I painted Elsa, although I'm not going to do it as messy or free flowing. All right, this one was obviously a very suggestive kind of playful way of painting. I am gonna stick within the lines a little bit more, but I'm gonna let the colors play a little bit too. So with this type of painting where you want the colors to stay within their areas, you do need to be a lot more careful. Notice I'm not putting water down first because I don't want the colors to spread too much. I actually want them to stay within their sort of designated areas. You may also notice that I'm using a very fine brush and that's helping me to paint with a nice level of detail and control. So you might've noticed I painted a bit of this skin color onto her face and I've actually spread it out fairly far. It gives a bit of different tone if you're able to put on some paint, but then gather a little bit of water to drag it out within the section. You can see we've got some lighter areas here and a darker area there. So I'm painting some purple. Now I'm using my water to spread the color around to where I need it to go. that idea again so I've painted the green and now I'm just painting with water and bringing the green with me So obviously two very different techniques, but using similar materials. This one, we're letting the paints blend together and be a lot more random and free flowing. Whereas with this one, I needed to be extremely careful to keep the colors within their sections. But I also still used water to let the color spread around where I needed it to go. as simple as that. I really hope you've enjoyed doing some drawing and watercolour painting today of two beautiful Disney princesses and been able to follow along to have a go at home. 
please feel free to share any photos that you have via our Facebook page, as well as subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel below for future videos. Thanks for joining me.